Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Yuzu's Vulkan API backend, which by the title of this video should let you know that it is now fully released for free to absolutely everyone in the public in their latest mainline versions. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at just a few improvements coming with this Vulkan backend, including improvements to game compatibility, performance, render quality in many, many games, on top of some awesome new GUI improvements that they have added in both the mainline and early access release versions. The first of these new GUI changes can be seen in the bottom left hand corner of every Yuzu window now. You can see you can easily toggle between OpenGL and Vulkan, you can toggle between asynchronous GPU emulation being on or off, and you can also enable or disable the docked mode within the emulator. Next up, if we come to emulation, configure, you can see already that they have completely revamped how the GUI looks, and when coming to controls, hitting configure and then coming into your pro controller configuration screen underneath your analog sticks you can now see that they have added gui functionality for mapping and setting up your dead zones personally i'm a huge fan of all of these new gui options and hopefully they can improve upon them even more in future now that we've taken a look at all of these new GUI changes, let's jump straight into it and talk about how the Vulkan API is going to improve your experience on Yuzu. So first and foremost, the Vulkan API is especially going to massively boost performance for anyone using an AMD GPU. This is mainly due to the fact that AMD have very, very poor support for the OpenGL renderer, which up until right now has been the main API for all of the graphics rendering in Yuzu, at least in its mainline release versions. Back in mid-December when the Vulkan API was released into the early access branch for testing, I did some performance comparisons between OpenGL and Vulkan and by the numbers you can see on screen right now, in many games on the emulator, pretty much every game that isn't Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Let's Go, there is a huge performance difference between these two APIs. In Super Mario Odyssey alone, we went from a meager 7 frames per second on OpenGL up to an average of 45 on Vulkan. That is an astronomical difference in performance. It's not only better frame rates you're going to be getting on Vulkan, there are many examples of games rendering much, much better. One fantastic example of this is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. By using the Vulkan API, not only are you going to get much better performance, but the render quality of the game itself is also massively improved when using Vulkan. This can easily be seen by swapping back to OpenGL where we have missing lighting, missing global illumination, no shadows rendered, and all of the plants and foliage in the game flickers just like this. Comparing this render quality to what we now have on the Vulkan API, I think we can all agree that there is a night and day difference between these two different different versions. Astral Chain is yet another fantastic example of the render quality differences between OpenGL and Vulkan, where not only is the game rendered much, much better, but it also performs, at least for me, about 25% better on Vulkan versus OpenGL. Now, while the intro section of Astral Chain is very, very slow regardless of what GPU you're using, if you're looking for a save that skips the intro and puts you straight into the game, allowing you to play it, you'll find one made by me linked down in this video's description. Now, while I could sit here all day and talk about the benefits of using the Vulkan API, the main ones are the fact that shader compilation is basically non-existent for many games. You're going to see a huge performance increase if you're an AMD or Intel iGPU user, and for all GPU vendors, you can expect better render quality in many games, just like Astral Chain and Link's Awakening. Another game that's a fantastic example of the benefits of using Vulkan is Luigi's Mansion. 3 where they have not only significantly boosted the performance of the game, improved its render quality in general, but thankfully they have also now completely fixed the issue where the graphics break whenever you're changing from room to room or whenever you call the elevator or lift to move from floor to floor. With these changes made to Luigi's Mansion and Yuzu, this game can now basically be considered playable. While you do need a specific mod to bypass a save crash that can occur during gameplay, you can find this mod plus many more at the link down in this video's description. 
For now though, we're going to take a look at some improved game compatibility, starting things off with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, where as you can see by the game footage here, they have completely fixed all of the grass rendering issues that were previously happening on OpenGL. This moves Breath of the Wild one step closer to being fully playable on Yuzu, and as I always say, this game's compatibility could be very important considering that Breath of the Wild's sequel is going to be on the exact same engine as this one. If they can get this type up and running in a much more optimized state, it would be pretty amazing to see the sequel booting and in some way playable on its day of release. Staying on the topic of rendering improvements, on the OpenGL backend they have completely fixed all of the physics interactions between fog, smoke, water, flowers, you name it. If there's a physics interaction and it's meant to happen in the Super Mario Odyssey, it is now working on both the OpenGL and Vulcan backends. In recent weeks, we've also seen significant render improvements to Mario and Sonic at the Olympics, where previously this game was just rendered completely blacked out with broken graphics, it is now rendered much more accurately on the emulator. Speaking of games that are accurately rendered, Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy is also now practically perfectly rendered and also runs at full speed on Yuzu, a pretty impressive improvement considering it used to run at around 20 frames per second, have horribly broken graphics and vertex explosions everywhere. Mario Tennis Aces has similarly seen a small performance boost in the latest versions, and when paired with the dynamic resolution disabling mod which you'll find down below, this game is now also running much better on Yuzu. With the changes we've seen in the last few days alone that improved Luigi's Mansion 3, Super Mario Odyssey and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there is a lot of game compatibility testing that needs to be done, so as always, keep your eyes peeled on the channel for new videos from me. As always, if there are any games that you would like to see me test out on the emulator, don't be afraid to ask for them down in the comments section. For now though, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button down below. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please consider subscribing to my channel, and if you're already subscribed, please hit the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I make any new video uploads. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.